death, I'm going to tell you the story of the reluctant dragon. It's a story about a dragon who doesn't want to fight. Who's ever heard of that? One evening, long ago, a shepherd ran home, terrified. I saw something terrible, he cried to his wife and son. It's as big as four horses. It has long sharp claws, a long pointy tail and shiny blue scales all over its body. His son looked up from his book. That sounds like a dragon, he said. A dragon, yelled the wife. A dragon, said the shepherd. That does not sound good. The boy wasn't scared. The next day, he set off up the hill to find the dragon. Bye, don't worry, he said to his parents. He might be friendly for the boy. The dragon was friendly and he was thrilled to see the boy. It's beautiful here, but it does get lonely. The boy smiled. He sat down and asked the dragon all kinds of questions. The dragon told stories of long, long ago. There were dangerous dragons everywhere and brave knights fought them to rescue princesses. The boy came back every day to hear the stories. But then the villagers found out about the dragon. They were terrified. The boy ran straight to the dragon. The villagers want to get rid of you, he panted. But I wouldn't hurt a fly, said the dragon. That afternoon, the boy heard even worse news. He's here, cried a villager. Who's here, asked the boy. St. George, the dragon killer, said a villager. He is going to fight a dragon, said the girl. The boy rushed back to the dragon. St. George, the dragon killer, wants to fight you, gasped the boy. And he has the longest spear I've ever seen, he added. But I don't like fighting, said the dragon. I'll just hide in my cave until he goes away. You can't, cried the boy. Everyone wants a fight. The dragon yawned. I'm sure you'll think of something, he said. The boy walked slowly back down to the village. A crowd of villagers were telling George about the dangerous dragon. He eats ten sheep for breakfast and burned down five houses, said the woman. It's not true, said the boy. The dragon wouldn't hurt a fly. But everyone wants a fight, said George. What can I do? Follow me, said the boy. And he took George to meet the dragon. What a perfect place for a fight said George. No fighting, said the dragon firmly. Not even a pretend fight, asked the boy. Maybe, said the dragon. The boy turned to George. Do you promise not to hurt him? Well, it has to look real, said George. Will there be a feast afterwards, asked the dragon. There will, and you can come, promised George. The next morning, lots of villagers arrived to watch the fight. The boy waited nervously by the dragon's cave. They cheered and waved when St. George roared into view. But where was the dragon? Then a roar echoed around the hills. Flames filled the air. Everyone gasped as the dragon appeared. His scales sparkled and he breathed out fire. George! cried George. He galloped hard, his spear held high. The dragon bounded up and they shot past each other. Missed! yelled the crowd. George and the dragon turned around and charged again. This time there was no way they could miss. Clatter! Bam! Oh! The dragon slumped to the ground. George towered over him. Cut off his head, said a jeering villager. I think the dragon has learnt his lesson, George declared. Let's invite him to our feast. And he led the villagers, the boy and the dragon back down the hill. 
The boy was happy because his plan had worked. The villagers were happy because they had seen a fight. George was happy because he'd won. The dragon was happiest of all. He had lots of new friends and a very full tummy. Jolly night it's been, he murmured and began to speak. How will I get him home? said the boy. I'll help, said George. He gave the dragon a prod. And they set off up the hill, arm in arm. The same, the dragon and the boy. I hope you enjoyed the story. Thank you.